Ladies and gents, welcome to tonight's episode of Les Mort d'Arthur. Tonight, we'll see just what happens when that great knight, Sir Palamide, turns upon Sir Tristram to cause some chaos and havoc upon the battlefield. All good fun coming up, ladies and gents. So welcome, welcome, Dawn. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening to you. How are you this fine evening? I hope you're doing very well indeed. <laughs> Tend a bit of a yawn. I do warn, there might be some slight yawning. I've been up since five o'clock this morning. Yeah, very early start. You've had a nap. I can only, I'm envious of you for being able to have a nap done. Um, I wish I've had a nap today. I'm looking forward to getting some good sleep tonight. Uh, very, very early start. Oh, four, okay. No, I don't get to complain about five o'clock anymore. You were up at 4.30, I had a five o'clock start. Uh, my, my complaining will stop. I've only had two cups of coffee though. Um, in retrospect, I meant to have more coffee. I should have had more coffee, but it's fine. We'll make do with the two cups of coffee. Two cups of coffee and I went book shopping, so... I didn't realise it was that early in the morning, Donna. That's, that's far, that's... Oh. I don't think I could cope with 4.30. 5 o'clock, I'm grumpy as sin. 5.30, 5 I can usually manage. At 5.30 start and I'm fine for, I can have enough energy for the day at 5.30. Seems the extra half an hour this morning just has slain me. Um, and considering that I've spent... <laughs> I know that feeling all too well, Dawn. I know it all too well. Uh, indeed. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't feel much like... If I don't... I, I'm not a talker first thing in the morning. Um, you, you'll struggle to get a coherent sentence out of me until about 8.30. Um, that's a nice trick. I like that trick. Hello, hello, Karen. Come in, come in, come in. And hello, Emily, as well. Come in. We'll give it another minute or so before we get started with tonight's tale. But yes, Don, I can see a smile can help to get started with the day. Uh, I, I was smiling this morning. I'm still smiling. I'm just, just a bit worn down. Did a lot of travelling today. Um, over to London and back. So, I mean, it's it's a strange thing about travelling. Technically, you're sat on a train um, all day and then sitting in meetings all day and then back on the train, but somehow you manage to be knackered even still, um, even though you just done a lot of sitting. But hey, hey, at least I didn't have to drive to London and back. That's the positive thing. I did see Peter Pan's house, though. For anyone who's interested, I went past J.M. Barry's house. Um, I've gone past J.M. Barry's house many times, but I didn't realise he lived there. So I saw Peter Pan's house. So I'll tweet a picture of the plaque outside Peter Pan's house, um, which it isn't as exciting as it sounds. But hey, there's a picture of a blue plaque. You can't ask for better than that. Anyway... Let's, ladies and gents, move on to tonight's show, shall we? And see if I can go and wave my hands enough, if I can shout enough about this. Can I convince my body? I feel like a conductor like this. So my conductor. Look, I think I've got the hair to be a conductor. Hello, Marabon, come in, come in, come in. I feel like I should be an Amadeus, you know, just, just composing something. <laughs> I, actually, I could I could pretend. I, I should do a scope where I pretend to be conducting. Just play some music, make it look like I've got a concert hall behind me, and then you just see me and you think there was an orchestra. Really, it would be Spotify playing in the background. Anyway, we won't do that. But what we will do, what we will do, ladies and gents, is we will go, hello, 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 come in, come in, Jackie, come in. We will get into tonight's tale, so that will be a part. So, 
when we spoke last, Sir Palamides had managed to win a victory on the first day of the tournament of the Castle of Lonazep. Just look at me go with the hand gestures now. I'm getting into this. I like, I like the black cardigan. The black cardigan is bringing out the maestro at me. So, after winning a victory on the first day, Sir Tristram's friend, Sir Dinadan, took to mocking him and calling Tristram out to be a coward because Tristram was having a bit of an off day and was not the greatest knight on the battlefield. Well, yeah, I, I, have to, I feel sorry for Tristram here. We all have our off days. Even a knight as great as Sir Tristram, but... And here's the rope, ladies and gents. But Sir Tristram, Sir Tristram is now about to go into the second day of the Tournament of Lonazep. And here's the question. The question is this, ladies and gents. In the second day of the tournament, will Tristram manage to get his act together? He had a rubbish first day. And the second day, will Tristram be strong enough, be bold enough, be brave enough? Will he be in the zone? Absolutely, Jackie. That is the question we will answer tonight. So, without further ado, ladies and gents, let's get into tonight's show. Then, there was a cry unto all knights, that when they heard the horn blow, that they should make jousts, as they did on the first day. And... Like as the brethren Sir Edward and Sir Sadoc began the joust of the first day, so on this second day, Sir Owain, the king's son Urien, and Sir Lucanair, the butler, began the jousts on the second day. At the first encounter, Sir Owain smote down the son of the king of Scots, and Sir Lucanair ran against the King of Wales, and they both broke their spears all to pieces. And they were so fierce both, that they hurtled together, and both men fell to the earth. Then, hello Marissa, then they of Orkney horsed themselves again, as did Sir Lucanair. And then... Then came Sir Tristram de Leon onto the field, and Sir Tristram rode and smote down Sir Owain and Sir Lucanair, and Sir Palamides then came and smote down two other knights. Sir Gareth in his own turn smote down two more knights, and then, then Sir Arthur said unto Lancelot, She yonder, three knights do passing well, and namely, the first jousted. Sir, said Lancelot, that knight began not yet, but you shall see him do marvellous deeds on this day. You mock my words. And then came into the place the Duke's son of Orkney. And then they began a great deed of arms. And when Sir Tristram saw them so begin, he said to Palamides, how do you feel yourself? May you do this day as you did yesterday? No, said Palamides. I feel myself so worthy and sorely bruised of yesterday's deeds that I might not endure as I did that day. I'm sorry to hear that, said Tristram, for I shall lack you this day. But said so Palamides said, Trust not to me, for I may not do as I did. All these words, said Palamides, to beguile Sir Tristram. Sir, said Tristram unto Sir Gareth, then must I trust you. Wherefore, I pray you, be not far from me to rescue me if I come to harm. If need be, said Sir Gareth. I shall not fail you in anything that I might do. Then Sir Palamides. <laughs> we, 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 we've got some hatred for Sir Palamides tonight, haven't we? He is a cheater and horse smiter. I like horse smiter. Horse smiter should be an insult that we use more often. <laughs> then 
Sir Palamides rode by himself. And in despite of Sir Tristram, he put himself in the thickest press among them of Orkney. And there he did so marvellously deeds of arms that all men had a wonder of him. For there might no man stand against him with a single stroke. And when Tristram saw Sir Palamides doing such deeds of arms for the other side, he marvelled and said to himself, He's lied. He has left because he is weary of my company. And so Sir Tristram beheld Palamides for a great while, and did but little else, for the noise and cry was so huge and so great, that Sir Tristram marvelled from whence came the strength that Sir Palamides had in the field. Sir, said Sir Gareth to Sir Tristram, remember you not of the words that Sir Dinadan said to you yesterday, when he called you a coward? Forsooth, sir, he said, and for no ill, for you are the man in the world that he most loves, and all that he said was for your worship, and therefore, said Sir Gareth to Sir Tristram, let me know this day what you will do, and wonder you not so upon Sir Palamides, for he enforceth himself to win all the worship and honour from you. I might well believe it, said Sir Tristram. And since I understand his evil will and his envy, you shall see, if I enforce myself, that the noise shall be left that now it is upon him. And then, then, ladies and gents, Sir Tristram rode into the thickest of the press, and then he did marvellously well. He did great deeds of arms, and all men that saw him said that Sir Tristram had done double the deeds of arms that Sir Palamides had already done aforehand. And then the noise went away from Sir Palamides, and the people cheered for Sir Tristram. Jesus, said the people, see how Tristram smites down with his spear so many knights, and see said they, how many knights that he smites down with his sword, and how many knights that he's knocked the helms off of the shields. And so he beat them all of Orkney before him. How now, said Sir Lancelot to King Arthur, I told you that this day there would a knight play his pageant. And yonder, yonder rides a knight that you may see that he does knightly, for he has strength and wind. So God help me, said Arthur to Lancelot. What you say is the truth, for I never saw a better knight than he, for he has passed beyond the skills of Sir Palamides. Sir, know you well, said Lancelot. It must be of so right, for that is himself, the noble knight Sir Tristram. Seeing those deeds, I might well believe it, said Arthur. But when Sir Palamides heard the noise and the cry and the cheers of the crowd turn away from him, he rode out on a path and beheld Sir Tristram. And when Sir Palamides saw Sir Tristram do marvellously well, he wept, passingly sore, for he knew well that he should win no more worship that day. For well did Sir Palamides know that Sir Tristram put forth his strength and his manhood, and after he should get little worship that day. That's right, he's a crybaby to boot. Is there nothing, nothing positive that can be said about Sir Palamides? We'll see. We are only halfway through tonight's tales, ladies and gents. There is still time for Palamides, perhaps, to turn this around and see, see if he can win some kind of honour and victory on this day. For though the crowd may have forgiven the horse mitre, as he's been described, we, we have not been so quick to forgive. <laughs> Frank, I actually, I, I 
I should I should stop and tweet you guys a picture. BT have dug up the entire stretch of the road at the moment, um, which is why we've been having internet problems. Um, there's there's just a big hole in the ground. So sometimes the cable's working, sometimes it's not. I'm going to hope that by the time they fill the hole in, everything is sorted. But clearly, Frank, clearly, there's much a desire to go cutting things at the moment and cutting the wrong things indeed. Anyway, hello everyone who joined midway through there. Hello, Rosella. Hello, Marissa. Hello, Queen and Rachel. Hello, Frank and Rose. Hello, 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 Richard. Welcome. Halfway through tonight's tale. The second day of the tournament of Lona Zepp is afoot. All ready. All ready. Really? Well, there you go. It's an awful thing, the internet, sometimes. Push Palamides in the cable holes. That's right. We've got no love for Sir Palamides on this show. Sir Palamides won the field of victory on the first day of that tournament because what he decided to do, ladies and gents, was in a most ungallant way, knowing that he could not defeat Sir Lancelot in a straight man-to-man -man combat, chose instead to be ahead the horse that Sir Lancelot was riding. Now the second day of battle is underfoot, and this time we're hoping that Sir Tristram might pull his finger out of his backside and show that Sir Tristram has got what it takes to begin, and already... With the opening of tonight's battle, Sir Tristram has proved that he is such a great knight, such a powerful knight upon the battlefield, that Sir Palamides has wept to see Tristram's skill, knowing that he could not beat him. Well, here's the question that we have to ask, ladies and gents. Is Sir Palamides the kind of man to just let this go? Is Sir Palamides the kind of chivalrous man to see another knight do better than him and to accept that he is a greater man than him and to let him go? Oh, no, ladies and gents, I think not. I think not, and I don't think you think that Palamides is that kind of man either. Palamides is a dirty fighter. He beat Sir Lancelot through a dirty trick. The one time he knocked Sir Tristan from his horse was when he came with a spear and smit him from behind. Now, now, ladies and gents, with Tristan doing so well, is he going to take this lying down? Oh no, oh no, oh no! But will the second half of tonight's tale be the moment that he chooses to prove this. Well, we'll find out, ladies and gents. Find out, indeed, as we continue to the second half of tonight's tale. And I love the intros as well, Rosie. In fact, in fact, Rosie, I should get a plug-in for it. After, after, because Mallory didn't do the end of the tales of um, Tristram and Isolde, I will... Instead of just ending it midway through, after this, um, in a few months' time, um, basically when we get into May, in May I will do a show which is entirely intro, no reading, just pure intro. That's coming up in May, but we'll continue with tonight. Then, then came King Arthur and the King of North Galee and Sir Lancelot the Lake, and Sir Blobris, Sir Bors de Canis, Sir Ector de Marie, these three knights came into the field with Sir Lancelot. And then Sir Lancelot, with the three knights of his kin, did so great deeds of arms that all the noise began upon Sir Lancelot. And so they beat the King of Wales and the King of the Scots farther back, and they made themselves to avoid the field. But Sir Tristram and Sir Gareth abode still in the field and endured all that ever there came, so that all men had wonder that ever any knight might endure so many strokes. But ever Sir Lancelot and his three kinsmen, by the commandment of Sir Lancelot, forbear Sir Tristram. They refused to fight him. Then said Arthur, 
Is that Sir Palamite who endures so well upon the field of battle? No. No, said Sir Lancelot. Know you well, that man who does so well is the good knight Sir Tristram. Yonder, in fact, you might see Sir Palamide, and behold, he just stands there and does little or nothing. And sir, you shall understand that Sir Lance, that Sir Tristram knows that this day and plans to beat us all out on the field and win the victory of the tournament. And as for me, said Lancelot, I shall not fight him. I shall not fight him at all. Sir, said Lancelot unto Arthur, you may see now how Sir Palamides just stands there and does nothing as if he was in a dream. Know you well that he is full heavy with regret that Sir Tristram does such great deeds of arms. Then he is but a fool, said Arthur. For never was Sir Palamite, nor never shall be, of such prowess as Sir Tristram is. And if he has any envy of Sir Tristram, and comes in with him at his side, well, he's a false knight. As the king and Sir Lancelot thus spoke, Sir Tristram rode privily out of the press, and none saw him other than the beautiful Isolde. And Sir Palamide, for those two would not ever let their eyes off Sir Tristram. And when Sir Tristram came into the field, yeah, that's our place. And when Sir Tristram came to his pavilions, he found Sir Dinadan in his bed asleep. Wake up, said Tristram. You ought to be ashamed to sleep when knights are having fighting in the field. Then said Dinadan, arose lightly and said, What would you have me do? Make yourself ready, said Sir Tristram. Ride with me into the tournament. And so Dinadan armed himself and looked at Sir Tristram's helm on his shield. And when he saw that so many strokes had already been laid upon his helm and upon his shield, then he said, Phew. Looks like it was a good job I was asleep. For if I'd have been with you, it would have been for shame that I'd have followed you. For more shame than any prowess that's in me. For I see well that those strokes I'd have been truly beaten as I was yesterday. I couldn't stand up to that. Stop falling around, said Tristram, and come off so that we are ready in the field again. What, said Sir Dinadan? Is your heart up? Yesterday you fared as if you were in a dream. So then, you were almost arrayed in a black harness. Oh, Jesus, said Dinadan, what ails you this day? It seems to me now that you're far wilder than you were yesterday. Then Tristram smiled at Dinadan and said, Await well upon me, friend. If you see me overmaxed in the field, look that you are ever able to lend me assistance, and I shall make you ready way by God's grace and protect you. And so Sir Tristram and Sir Dinadan took their horses. All this was seen by Sir Palamides, both their coming and their going, and so did the beautiful Isolde see for she knew Sir Tristram above all other. And as Tristram and Dinadan came onto the field, then a thought grew in Palamide's mind. And there, ladies and gents, we will end tonight's tale. Tristram has returned to the field of tournament with Sir Dinadan alongside him. And Palamide's Palamide has had a thought. Palamide, who has been weeping on the edge of the tournament, wishing, wishing he was half the man of that Sir Tristram is. Perhaps, perhaps, if he might not be able to beat Sir Tristram in a shame, in a truly honourable, honourable, in a truly honourable fashion, 
then perhaps, perhaps he might be able to defeat Sir Tristram through some mischief. And so, ladies and gents, tomorrow night we'll find out just what happened as Sir Palamides stalks Tristram on the battlefield, hungry for his blood. You will not want to miss tomorrow night's show, ladies and gents. You will not want to miss this in any way, shape or form. Palamides is out for blood, stalking Tristram upon the field. Tristram has asked Sir Dinadan to watch his back, but Sir Dinadan, Sir Dinadan is a man who doesn't like to fight. Sir Dinadan is a man who doesn't like to expose himself to danger. Has Sir Tristram entrusted his safekeeping to the right man? Will Sir Dinadan be capable of protecting Sir Tristram when Sir Palamides comes after him? They pull no punches, Marabond. They pull no punches at all. They leave it all out on the field. And tomorrow night we'll find out just who'll be walking away and who will be limping. Oh, it's a good, good show. That's right, Dinner Dan. Dinner Dan is a great one for talking smack. Talking smack and then sleeping through every single battle or fight going. How's that for a deep breath, Frank? Thank you. I do need to be reminded. I do need to be reminded to take a deep breath sometimes, but all still to come, ladies and gents. It will be a rep roaring success that I'm looking forward to sharing with you all. Of course, still to come, though, ladies and gents. Still to come on tonight's show is Poetry Live in a few minutes' time. So I'm going to say goodbye to all of you very, very briefly. Run downstairs, grab myself some poetry, grab myself a drink, and then come back for Poetry Live. Frank, I miss you guys as well. I'm sorry that the internet wasn't working properly last night. Fingers crossed that if I go and run and grab a drink and go... No scissors, Frank! It's perfect! Perfect as it is now! No need for it. I did! Check it out, Jackie. Check out the replay. We did the Wasteland in its entirety. All five sections. We did that. April is the cruelest month through to shanty, shanty, shanty. We did it all. And I can't remember what I've picked for tonight. But I'm going to close this down now, find out what I've scheduled, and then come up and read it for you all. It will be wonderful, whatever I've picked. I have good taste, usually. So I will see you very, very shortly. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Karen and Marabond. Thank you, Jackie and Marcella. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Queen. Thank you, Rachel and Frank. Thank you, Rose and Katya. Welcome, Katya, over in Russia. Welcome to our nightly readings of Les Mortes d'Arthur. I'm going to grab a drink, grab some poetry, and see you guys in a few minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs>